Good evening, my name is Aline de Oliveira. Tonight I represent the Sustainable Westchester Capstone Project, led by faculty advisor Thomas Abdella. Sustainable Westchester is a consortium of Westchester governments, providing technical assistance to its member municipalities on sustainability initiatives. New York State is encouraging municipalities to increase the number of electric vehicles in order to de decrease greenhouse gas emissions um, in the transportation sector. In order to help expedite this effort, Sustainable Westchester will be providing expert guidance to its member municipalities. New York State's Governor Andrew Cuomo issued a statewide mandate to decrease greenhouse gas emissions. 40% by 2030 and 80% by 2050, based on 1990 levels. Currently, New York's transportation sector is the largest contributor of greenhouse gas emissions in the state. Transitioning from conventional vehicles to electric vehicles will significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions in New York. Hence, the proliferation or the rapid increase in numbers of electric vehicles is a transformational change needed to help the state achieve its goal. Electric vehicles, also known as EVs, are zero emission vehicles, meaning no greenhouse gases are emitted when driving an EV. The reason these vehicles don't emit greenhouse gases is they use electrically charged batteries instead of petroleum-based fuels. However, greenhouse gases are generated while charging the battery of an EV. For this reason, the right energy grid is needed if you want to see significant decreases in greenhouse gases through the increase of electric vehicles. According to the Energy Information Administration, um, New York's net electric generation by source is relatively clean as we currently source less than 4% from coal, the worst offender in greenhouse gas emissions. Considering battery charging, Driving an EV still emits 80% less greenhouse gases than driving a conventional car in New York. If we were to transition today, 1% of Westchester cars to, to electric vehicles, we would see a savings, according to the EPA equivalency calculator, of the power to generate electricity on 4,155 homes in one year, or 8,930 tons of emissions um, caused by waste going to a landfill in terms of emissions. Now that we've seen the benefits of electric vehicles, you may be asking, why don't we have more of them? Well, we have identified three main barriers. Cost of ownership, access to charging station, and the technology learning curve. Looking into the pricing, you can see the Toyota Camry, a conventional vehicle, in a Chevy boat, an uh, electric vehicle, Chevy is more expensive. This difference is mainly due to the battery, currently one third of the car's total cost. In terms of charging, EV owners may opt to install a charging station at their homes. That will also add extra costs. In order to mitigate both EV costs and home charging station costs, New York State and the federal government provides financial rebates and tax incentives. When looking into EV costs, it's important to consider the total cost of ownership. EVs have significantly lower maintenance costs, since it doesn't require oil changes, or expenses related to exhaust systems. It doesn't have an engine. More importantly, most EV owners currently don't pay for gas. Free or subsidized charging is offered. That is a great in incentive. EV drivers also get other perks, such as HOV lane privileges and parking privileges, along with discounts provided by EasyPass or the Port Authority. In addition, evolving technology will help to decrease battery costs. We expect to see price parity between electric and conventional vehicles by 2022. On the second barrier, charging an EV requires consumers to change their habits. Fully charging a Chevy boat could take up to eight hours using a mid-level range charger. To accommodate this change, research shows that EV owners charge their cars at locations where their cars stay idle for a long time, such as their home or at workplaces. In addition, 
Some consumers are uncertain about charging availability or battery driving range. This is also known as range anxiety. That's actually a term, and it's defined as the worry on the part of a person driving an electric car that the battery, battery will run out before the destination or a suitable charging point is reached. In order to overcome these barriers, we need more charging stations. They need to be installed in locations where people can see them and conveniently use them, such as workplaces, city centers, commuter hubs, etc. Charging stations and extra perks to EV owners should be well advertised. To avoid issues regarding increased demand charges and costs associated with it, utility companies should be engaged and rates should be addressed. In terms of the learning curve, some consumers may not be familiar with EV's performance, reliability, and safety. They may also not know how far an EV can drive, how long it takes to charge, and what's required to maintain it. For example, consumers may not know that a fully charged Chevy boat can drive up to 238 miles. Consumer misinformation and preconceived ideas about EVs can hinder potential EV purchases. In order to overcome these barriers, EV awareness and updated information on latest developments have to be cascaded down to consumers, dealerships, and municipal employees. The municipalities can help support this awareness by replacing municipal fleets with electric vehicles. This would allow residents to interact with the technology and have a first-hand experience. One of the biggest questions to support the increase of EVs is who will pay for it? Fortunately, funding is available through a number of New York State programs supporting the cost of EV purchases, charging station installation, and other incentives to help mitigate the learning curve. EV purchases made by regular consumers can be offset through New York State's rebates and tax incentives, as I said before. Municipal fleet costs can be offset through NYSERDA grants, DEC competitive bids, and NYPA's interest-free financing. Charging station costs can be offset by DEC rebates and NYPA's competitive bids. The DEC offers zoning, permitting, and building codes to support the installation of charging stations. In addition, municipalities can work with public-private partnerships to increase the number of charging stations. In order to increase awareness and support the learning curve, NYSERDA offers up to 50 hours of consulting free through its Clean Energy Community Program, along with grants of up to, of up to $250,000 to help fund clean energy projects. Now that we've looked into the barriers and solutions for EV proliferation, along with the funding available to support it, we'll take a look at what our client Sustainable Westchester can do as a political advocate, a facilitator of complex projects, and an information hub. <clears throat> as a political advocate, Sustainable Westchester can advocate for initiatives that will help to increase the number of EVs, such as mandate municipal fleets to transition to electric vehicles in available categories, allocate 20% of parking spaces in new developments as charging ports, and convert existing parking lots to do the same, engage with utility companies to align on increased demand charges, rates, and to also encourage utilities to promote off-peak charging programs. As a facilitator of complex projects, Sustainable Westchester can engage a team of experts to assist member municipalities by providing information on funding opportunities and deadlines, assist with their electric vehicle proliferation plans, including municipality uh, fleet's replacement plans, and assisting with charging station siting, installation, and continued maintenance plans. As an information hub, Sustainable Westchester can help to increase awareness to key stakeholders through educational outreach by engaging dealers and consumers during publicly held information sessions, providing relevant information to each group, encouraging dealerships to have EVs in stock, this way consumers can feel, see, and test drive the EVs. They can also create posters, pamphlets, flyers, brochures, demystifying practical information about EVs and related technology. 
In order to familiarize municipalities with EVs, we will provide Sustainable Westchester with a municipality toolkit. This toolkit will include information on EV technology and benefits, relevant information to potential EV consumers and key stakeholders, and an executable EV proliferation plan. We recommend Sustainable Westchester to make this toolkit available on its website for easy access to its members. By following these recommendations, we believe Sustainable Westchester will be able to assist municipalities to increase the number of electric vehicles in their communities, supporting the goal to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the state of New York, building a cleaner, greener New York for generations to come, as Governor Cuomo has said it. Thank you. Hi, Eileen. Well Hi. done. Um, Thanks. The, the two of us, along with two others, are in another class doing a project on EVs, and we looked at California and Norway as some examples. Did you guys look at them at all, maybe talk to them directly, or is that kind of separate from this project? We looked into various um, locations to um, try to see what has worked and what has not worked. Um, I believe California was one of the sites we've looked into. Norway was not, since their political um, govern in relation to um, EVs is very different from New York. But thanks for asking. Um, and kind of related to that, do you feel like the recommendations you've laid out or the toolkit could be transferred to other municipalities fairly easy, or is it quite unique to Westchester? It could <clears throat> Well, the regulatory information is state-based, state so I believe it would work anywhere in New York where the funding and policies would apply. It probably wouldn't work if it's a state that is not providing the same kind of incentives, but for New York municipalities outside of Westchester, I believe, yes, it could be work. Hi, thank you for your presentation. Um, I have a question regarding the coverage of the charging network, mm. not just in this municipality, but in a longer range, right? Because from a customer perspective, if I have, let's say, an EV that I can just use in the neighborhood, um, it, it definitely, I, I will still probably need another car when I want to make uh, longer distances, right? If I don't have um, the right infrastructure um, to charge it. So have you take a look um, on this infrastructure in the New York State? Yes. <clears throat> so in New York State, there is already a map available with all the charging station currently in existence. Um, so if you want to take a road trip within the state, you could look into that map. Now, to your point about long, longer distance uh, traveling, you're right. Um, if we really want electric vehicles to pick up and in, in you know proliferation to ha to happen faster, the infrastructure to support it throughout the nation is needed. <laughs>